In this video we study the famous consensus problem in distributed systems. In particular, we focus on randomized consensus where the consensus algorithm can make non-deterministic decisions. First, let's define what the consensus problem is. In a system comprising distributed processes, called nodes, each node has some input data. In the example here, the input is simply a natural number. The goal is for all nodes to agree on the same data, for example, the same number. The more formal definition goes as follows. We say that an algorithm solves the consensus problem if it has the following three properties. The first property is called agreement, which says that all nodes must decide on the same value at the end of the execution of the algorithm. The second property is called validity. The algorithm has the validity property if the nodes decide on a value that is the input value of a node, that is, one node must have had this value at the beginning of the execution. Note that there are also other definitions of validity. Lastly, the third property is called termination, which says that all nodes must eventually decide on a value. We consider the consensus problem in the so-called asynchronous communication model. In this model, the nodes cannot make any assumptions about the time it takes for messages to arrive. In fact, while sent messages are guaranteed to arrive eventually, they may be delayed by an arbitrary amount of time. A node therefore cannot wait for a certain time to receive a certain message. Instead, every node can only react to messages when they arrive. In the example here, when the message arrives, after any amount of time, the receiving node processes it. Since message delays can vary greatly in large wide area networks like the internet, this appears to be a reasonable model. Unfortunately, it can be shown that the consensus problem cannot be solved at all in this model even if at most one out of any number of nodes in the distributed system may fail. This is the famous FLP theorem, named after the researchers Fisher, Lynch and Patterson who proved this result. Fortunately, this impossibility result only applies to deterministic algorithms, so there is hope that an algorithm that randomizes its decisions may be able to solve consensus after all. In this video, we will show that it is indeed possible to solve the problem using randomization. Let's take a closer look at an algorithm that works. In fact, it not only works, it can tolerate way more than one failure. The nodes will eventually decide on a value as long as fewer than half of all nodes may crash. We will illustrate the algorithm using this example consisting of five nodes. Since more than half of the nodes must not fail, there can be at most f equals 2 failures. In this video, we consider crash failures where a failed node simply stops processing and sending messages until the end of the execution. The algorithm proceeds in rounds, each round consisting of two message exchanges among all nodes. For every node, the first step in every round is to tell all nodes its current value. For example, the node in the bottom left sends val01, which means that its value is 0 in round 1. Every node waits until it receives the value of more than half of all nodes. Recall that fewer than half of all nodes may crash, so every node will always be able to collect enough values under this assumption. In the example, every node collects three values because at most, two out of five nodes may fail. Each node checks if it receives only zeros or only ones. If this is the case, it will propose this value. In the example here, none of the nodes received only zeros or ones, so the nodes set the proposed value to the bottom symbol, which means that they do not propose any value. Every node sends a proposal message for this round containing the proposed value, if any. In the example here, the node in the bottom left sends prop bottom 1, which means that it doesn't propose any value for round 1. As in the first communication round, every node collects more than half of all proposal messages, which is 3 in our example. If no proposal was received, which is the case here, the nodes throw a random coin to choose a new value. In the example, the coin tosses of the topmost node and the two nodes at the bottom cause them to change their values. After this step, round 1 is over. In round 2, the same steps happen again. First, each node broadcasts its value. In the example, the node in the bottom left sends value 1 for round 2. Again, all nodes collect three values. If they receive both zeros and ones, there is no proposal. In the example here, one node only receives zeros. 
In this case, the node proposes the value 0. This means that, in the proposal step, while the node in the bottom left again sends an empty proposal, the node in the top right sends the proposal 0. Next, the nodes again collect three proposal messages. While there is a proposal for zero sent around, there is no guarantee that the nodes will see it. In the example here, it takes a long time to deliver the proposal to two of the five nodes, so only three out of the five nodes receive it. As a result, they accept the proposal and set their value to zero. The other two nodes again set their local value to zero or one uniformly at random. In the example, three nodes change their values. The node in the bottom left changes its value to zero because it received a proposal for zero, and the nodes in the top left and bottom right happen to change their values due to the random coin toss. We get the following picture at the end of round two. In round three, the nodes again broadcast their values and collect three of these messages. In the example, three nodes now manage to get only zeros. As a result, these three nodes send proposals for zero in the next step. Now it happened that two nodes received only proposals for zero, that is, no empty proposals. These nodes decide on zero but they continue to execute the algorithm for one more round. As we can see in the example, every node received at least one proposal for zero, so all nodes set their value to zero. In fact, it's only the node in the bottom right that changes its value from 1 to 0. At the start of round 4, every node starts with value 0. It is now easy to see what happens. Every node broadcasts the value 0. So, every node receives the value 0 three times and therefore proposes the value 0. That is, every node sends a proposal for value 0 to all nodes. Every node only receives proposals for value 0 and so the remaining three nodes also decide on this value. We see that consensus was reached successfully and every node eventually terminates. Let's now discuss why the algorithm is correct. Let's start with the agreement property. Why is it guaranteed that nodes can only decide on one value? The reason is that, if a node receives a proposal three times, it is guaranteed that every node gets at least one of these proposal messages because there are five in total. So, in this situation, it is clear that all nodes set their value to the value in the proposal. At this point, it is clear that this value will be the final value. But wait a minute. What if some node also received a proposal for the other value? In the example here, the node in the top left not only received a proposal for 0 but also a proposal for 1. What happens in this case? Fortunately, this case is actually not possible. If there is a proposal for 0, then at least three nodes must have value 0 at the beginning of the round. Likewise, if there is a proposal for 1, at least three nodes must have value 1 at the beginning of the round. But there are only five nodes, so it is not possible that there are proposals for both values in the same round. As we have seen in the execution of round 4, if all nodes start the round with the same value, they will decide on that value, so the validity property holds as well. The termination property is interesting. If there is no proposal because no node receives only zeros or ones, then all nodes randomly choose a new value. It is possible that all nodes choose the same value by chance. This probability is 1 over 2 to the power of n for n nodes. What if some nodes did receive a proposal? As discussed before, there can only be a proposal for 0 or 1, not both. In this case, it is still possible that all other nodes randomly choose exactly the right value. So again, all nodes will have the same value with probability at least 1 over 2 to the power of n. Since this is true in every round, the algorithm is expected to terminate in the order of 2 to the power of n rounds. Obviously, that's a lot of rounds for large networks but our goal was just to show that the consensus problem can be solved using randomization. So, the problem is solvable in the asynchronous model with fewer than half of the nodes potentially crashing. Can we do better? The answer is no, our simple algorithm is in fact optimal in this regard. If at least half of all the nodes may fail, the consensus problem again cannot be solved. This impossibility result is easy to show. Consider the scenario where half of the nodes start with value 0 and the other half starts with 1. 
we assume now that all messages between the two halves are delayed arbitrarily whereas all messages within the two halves arrive very quickly. Since the first half cannot wait to hear from the other half because all nodes in the other half may have failed, they need to decide independently. Since all of their values are zero, they must decide zero, otherwise they might violate the validity property. Similarly, the other half must decide one, which violates the agreement property. Let's summarize what we've learned. We studied the famous consensus problem with the properties agreement, validity, and termination. While the problem is not solvable in the asynchronous model using any deterministic algorithm, we showed that the problem is solvable using a randomized algorithm even if fewer than half of all nodes may fail. We also showed that this bound is optimal. If half or more nodes may fail, the problem again becomes unsolvable. Thanks for watching.